This is a computer. This one cost me about 16 euros, which is in the region of 16 US dollars. But you can get them for as little as 8 dollars or even less. It doesn't have a screen or a keyboard or an operating system and it can only run one program at a time. But it is a computer. It's actually the Pi Pico W. For a long time I was hearing about these but I really had no idea what they did and now that I know what they do I absolutely love them and I think you will too. The Pico W is a version of the Pi Pico microcontroller that has internet and Bluetooth connectivity built in and you can program it in MicroPython or C or C++. I bought the version with attached legs as you can see because that's going to make it easier to experiment with. But you can buy it without the legs if you just want to solder a few connections for a specific purpose. It's powered by a USB micro B connector or you can power it directly via wires soldered to the board. I'm going to try to make this flash an external LED using MicroPython. You may be wondering what the Blazes is, is MicroPython. It's actually just an implementation of Python for microcontrollers. So if you know Python, you won't need to learn anything new for this tutorial. For this project, I'm going to be using a solderless breadboard. Or you can also buy wires that you can sort of plug directly onto the legs of things like this Pi Pico. I'm also going to be using an LED. The LED has an anode or positive terminal and a cathode or negative terminal. If you look closely, the case is actually a little bit flattened just by the side of the negative terminal. And the negative leg or cathode is also shorter than the anode or positive terminal. We have to get it the right way around because an LED light emitting diode is a kind of diode. It will only allow current to pass in one direction. Now here's a slightly thorny problem because if I look up on the internet how much current an LED typically draws, well it depends on the colour of the LED. I've got a red LED which uses the least current and many websites say that a red LED typically will draw 20 milliamps. But I also read that each of the general input output pins of the Pi Pico can only supply safely up to 16 milliamps. So then you think, well, it shouldn't be possible to power an external LED from a Pi Pico. But it clearly is. You can see people doing it all over the place. And in practice, I think this red LED that I've got here lights up perfectly well with 10 milliamps. Now I'm also going to need a resistor and the function of this is to limit the current that goes through the LED. Otherwise we might burn out the Pi Pico and the LED as well. But since in theory this Pi Pico can't even power a red LED according to what I read, even though it can, I'm not really sure what resistor to use. I see suggested values everywhere from 50 ohms up to about 400 ohms. I've got one here that's actually 820 ohms and that seems to work just fine. Ideally you should probably start with a higher value and then try lower values if your LED isn't bright enough. But if you want to compromise, probably 330 ohms is a good value for most LEDs. All of these things are very cheap and available on Amazon. The solderless breadboard is the most expensive item and as I say, even if you don't want to solder, you could just buy wires that have a little connector on the end that you can just plug onto the leads of things. It's common to buy resistors in packs that contain lots of different resistors of different values. And you can buy big packs of LEDs in different colors if you want. Now the reason the Pi Pico can run Python is because someone's written a Python interpreter in C. So what we need to do is get that interpreter, put it on the Pi Pico, and then we can run Python programs on the Pi Pico. So I'm going to search for MicroPython Pi Pico W, something like that. And then we get to this download page and I need to download the latest release of MicroPython for the Pico W in my case. Now we've got that, what I need to do is I need to plug the Pi Pico into my computer 
via USB while holding down the boot select button. The boot select button is this button on top of the Pico. You can't really miss it. You need to hold that down while you plug it in. Now we've done that, the Pi Pico appears as a drive on my computer and I can drag the file I've downloaded to the Pico. Once that file's loaded on there, the Pico's going to disappear, so it's going to disconnect. I'm actually going to unplug it and then plug it back in again without holding down the boot select button because I want it to be connected to my machine, but I don't need it to be in the mode where I can put new files on it. So that file, the MicroPython interpreter, now has been sent into the PyPico's memory and it's loaded on the PyPico and I can connect to it from some kind of editor. So at this point I've loaded the MicroPython file onto my PyPico and then I unplugged it and plugged it in again so that it is connected to my computer although I can't now see it as a drive because I didn't hold down the boot select button the second time I plugged it in but it is connected. Now a popular editor to use is the Thony editor, which I've tried, but I haven't used it much. I don't really like it. It's one of those editors I think that's kind of lightweight and designed for beginners, but I prefer to use a more serious editor. So I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio Code here. So Visual Studio Code has nothing to do with Visual Studio, which is a massive sprawling IDE. Visual Studio Code is this lightweight, open source editor from Microsoft that's very, very good. So I've downloaded that and I've installed it. The first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to click this extensions button that kind of looks like some building blocks. I'm going to search for PyPicoW or something like that. And I'm going to install this MicroPython PyPico extension. Now I'm going to click this icon here in the top left and I'm going to go to open folder and browse to where I want to create a folder for my project. I'm going to create a new folder here and just name it whatever I feel like naming it. And that's where I'm going to put my project files. So now that I've opened that folder, I can use the MicroPython plugin to configure the folder as a folder where I'm going to create a MicroPython project. So I bring up the command palette, which on Mac is command shift P on windows. It's probably control shift P and I go to this configure project option and run that. And when it's finished, it's going to say project configuration completed. I've also got some suggestions that have come up for more plugins here that I might want to install. So I'm going to install this Microsoft Python plugin which has just general Python language support. Now I'm going to create a new file. Let's call it hello world.py. It's got to end in .py because it's a Python file. And let's see if we can just write a program that just says hello world. So I just need print round brackets, quotation marks, hello world. And you might be wondering, where's this actually going to come out? Because the PyPico doesn't have a console. But if I run this program, it will actually run it on the PyPico. You can see it says Pico connected at the bottom of the editor down there. And when I run it, it will actually say hello world in the console on Visual Studio Code, but it's actually running on the PyPico when I click that run button in the lower status bar there. For the next step, let's see if we can flash the built-in LED. Now, when I first got this PyPico W, I thought there wasn't a built-in LED and I must have got some kind of version of it that doesn't have the built-in LED. But in fact, if you look closely, there is a built-in LED and it's easiest to see, to be honest, when we're making it flash. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll get rid of the print hello world and we'll say from machine import pin. We're going to use this to access the general input output pins of the Pi Pico. And in fact, the internal LED is connected to pin 25. I'm also going to import uTime so we can use that to create a sleep. 
Let's create a variable called built-in LED or something. And I'm going to set that to a pin object. And we're going to supply the string LED as the first argument to pin to say that we want to access the built-in LED. And then we just need to say pin.out to say that we're going to use this pin for output. Then I'll create a infinite while loop. So that will go on until we stop the program. And we'll tell the built-in LED to switch off to start with in case it's already on. And then let's just sleep for, for example, half a second. So that's 500 milliseconds. After that, we'll switch the built-in LED on and then we'll sleep for another 500 milliseconds before we go around the loop to switching it off again. And now if we run that after saving the file, we can see that the built-in LED blinks on and off. So we still haven't connected anything to the Pi Pico W, but already we've got it to blink. So if we search for something like Pi Pico Pinout, we can pretty easily find a diagram of the Pi Pico's pins. And the ones we're particularly interested in here are these green general purpose input output pins and the black regularly spaced ground pins. So you may know that electric current flows actually from negative to positive or from lower voltages to higher voltages because the electrons are negative. But we usually think of it as flowing from positive or higher voltages to lower voltages. That's called conventional current. It's like water flowing from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. So the black ground pins are going to be like the negative terminal of our battery. We can think of those as being at zero volts. And the green general purpose input output pins, they're going to be normally at zero volts, but when we switch them on, they're going to be at 3.3 volts. So we're going to pick one of those arbitrarily. I'm actually going to use general purpose pin 15. Or if you just number the pins without regard for what they are, that's that would be pin number 20 here. And we're going to connect an LED and a resistor from that pin 20 to the nearest ground, which is at pin 18. So if you place the Pi Pico with the connector facing away from you, then the pins we're going to be using will be at the bottom on the left hand side. We'll be using GPIO 15, which is right at the bottom on the left. And we'll be using a ground pin that's three from the bottom on the left. So now I'm going to take my solderless breadboard and I'm going to plug the Pi Pico into it. The rows on this breadboard are actually all connected together, except there's like a central division right down the middle there. So we'll plug the Pico in so that the legs kind of straddle the central division. Now I'm going to plug in the LED very carefully making sure it's the right way around so that the negative leg plugs in to that ground pin that's third from the bottom. And I'm going to plug the positive leg in to one of the spur rows further to the left here on the solderless breadboard. Now I've just got to connect that spur leg of the LED, the positive terminal, to the GPIO pin. So I'm going to take the resistor and I'm going to put one leg into the GPI open row there. And the other leg I'm going to put on the same row as the LED positive terminal. So I've created a circuit where the GPIO 15 pin goes to the resistor. The resistor then goes to the LED. And the LED then connects to the ground pin on the Pi Pico. Now I need to do a little bit more programming. So I'm going to duplicate the line where we create this built-in LED variable. That's shift option, down arrow on the Macs, probably alt, shift, down arrow on Windows, I'd imagine. And I've renamed the duplicated variable to just LED. And we're going to change this LED string to 15 because we're using general purpose input output pin 15. I'm going to also duplicate the line where we switch the built-in LED off and change my new variable LED to off as well. And we'll do the same where we switch the built-in LED on and I'll switch this new LED variable on as well. So of course this new variable represents the general purpose input output pin that we've created our external LED to. Now all I have to do is run the program. 
and take a look at the results. So now we can see the external LED flashing on and off. And I'm also flashing the internal LED still as well. Now, an interesting thing we can do is if I save this file as main.py and then deploy it to the Pi Pico, the Pico will run that program every time it's switched on. So at the moment, I've been saving hello world.py just on my computer and then running that code on the Pi Pico, but that code's not actually on the Pi Pico. So I need to use this micro pico upload current file to pico option if I actually want to deploy a file onto the pico and by naming it main.py the pico is going to try to run that every time it starts up so now I can just plug in the pico anywhere even just to a USB socket I've got on a like mains adapter anywhere I like and it will straight away start running that program and it will start flashing both of the LEDs, as you can see. So I think this is really interesting. It's basically like doing electronics, except you hardly have to mess about with components at all. You're basically doing a lot of stuff on the Pi Pico that traditionally you, you could have done, let's say with a 555 timer IC or whatever. And of course we can do really complicated stuff on the Pi Pico that would not have been possible or would have been extraordinarily difficult with traditional electronics. As you can tell, I barely scratched the surface of this. And of course, if we wanted to power anything serious, or we wanted to power a lot of LEDs or whatever, we'd need some more external electronics so that we're not trying to draw too much power off the Pico. And of course, we can also sense things. We can get input as well. The Pico even has an analog to digital converter built into it. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a like so that I know that people actually do like this video. And if you'd like to see me do more stuff with the Pi Pico, if there's anything you're interested in and you want to know how to do it, then let me know and maybe I can investigate that. I actually bought this for a particular purpose. I've got some particular experiments that I want to do and I may upload more videos on those later on if I get anywhere with them. Before you go, it's time for me to try to sell you something really exciting. If you're interested in learning Python, or you already know Python, but you want to improve your Python, I've got an absolutely massive course that teaches you Python from scratch and moves through more and more advanced Python and eventually teaches you how to do machine learning in Python with artificial neural networks. So do check that out. There's a link in the description of this video. Until next time, happy coding.